Let's get Linus Torvald's thoughts on trust in the open source community, especially in the light of the significant security breach and hack that was known as the XZ utilities backdoor vulnerability. Linus talks about this and more, including the importance of a robust trust model with a strong interconnected open source community to defend against threats like this. There's definitely a unique and complex level of concern in the Linux open source project. Here's a recent conversation that Linus had with Dirk, who is the head of the open source program office at Verizon. Let's get into to what Linus thinks about this. Now, it certainly is today, yeah. But uh, let's, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, we talked about security, we talked about the, the challenges that come from the hardware up towards us. Let's go the other way, let's look at user space. And of course, the last few weeks, a lot of people who care about security have learned a lot about XZ and yeah. about the, the um, pretty amazing, and amazing in a bad way, uh, long, very long planned and well executed attack on the ecosystem. And I'm curious what your thoughts are about this. Well, so I'm hoping people know the background. I'm not going to go very much into that, uh, where open source in many ways relies on a certain amount of trust, mm -hmm. where you trust the developers, you trust your co-maintainer, you trust the people around you to do the right thing. And uh, honestly, it's not true just in open source. I mean, it's true even in, in proprietary source. The, you, you depend on the trust in the company, but also within the company, you depend on trusting your employees. And that trust can be violated. And uh, how to figure out when it's been violated is an open problem. And we've, we've seen this before. Uh, in the kernel space, we actually saw a, a university a few, several years ago that tried to do a study on how easy it is to upstream bad kernel patches. Yeah. And, and that's, that's actually an interesting study. They just didn't do it very well, and they didn't, they didn't tell a third party about this, and they, they just send us bad patches. Uh, and uh, understandably, maintainers A caught the bad patches, and B were really upset about this. And we're going, hey, you're a university group, and we were kind of trusting you, and you broke that trust. And that really ends up being a, a very personal matter. We had maintainers who were very pissed off. Well, you were being experimented on. You yes. were the, the objects of an experiment, and that is in violation of a ton of ethics rules. Yes. You can't do that. Yes. But I mean, so we've both seen that kind of experiments, and now, not in the kernel space, but in, in another open source project, we've seen an actual malicious attack. And nobody really had any explicit gates in place to try to catch this. But what I actually see as a huge positive is that despite there not being any like explicit rules in place, let's try to catch malicious activity, both, in both cases, they were actually really caught fairly quickly. Yeah. So the XC attack had a history going back several years. But when the actual bad actor took advantage of becoming a maintainer, uh, it was found within weeks. It was pretty quickly. But so it was found randomly. It was found randomly. But, but my point is, random ends up being good. I mean, you yes. don't always, you don't always, you can't always have specific rules in place because it's kind of, when you have rules in place, the bad actors, they don't follow the rules. Uh, so they can try to work around whatever technical rules you have in place. And the fact that open source projects have found these kinds of attacks does seem to imply a fairly strong amount of stability and, and that these things do get caught. Yeah. Uh, so clearly, it's a wake-up call. There's no question about that. And uh, there are a lot of people who are looking into various measures of trust mm -hmm. um, in the kernel. I mean, we, we had, there are existing projects, PGP being one of the really classic one, which has this notion of a network of trust. And in the kernel, we actually use that amongst maintainers. 
Uh, but, but I think uh, we're going to see a lot of work being put into some kind of uh, trust model where, where people see, oh, this is a new person or this is a person that is acting differently from, from before. Yeah, uh, for no particular reason, I want to point out the engineer who found this was a German engineer, but it's just random. Um, uh, thank you, there's, there's another German in the audience. Um, but I, I think what's so interesting about this, this whole notion of trust is in the after-the-fact analysis of these personas that were the bad actors, of course, they had none of the typical footprint that a real person would have. So, uh, um, Brian Krebs had this interesting piece that he said, the email address used for these attacks never showed up in any of the data breaches. Any of the many Equifax, United Health, you know, name any com company, T-Mobile, anybody who has their data stolen, and, and all these email addresses are online. You can find them in databases. And the emails of these bad actors weren't in that data, which is an interesting way to define whether you're a real person or not. But, <laughs> right? But, so the, the, the Linux network of trust, one of the requirements for the signature is that you meet the person face to face and you are supposed to look at their government idea. Of course, a, a nation state aggressor can create a false government ID, but still there is, there is an additional level of difficulty. But to me, I think the, the biggest defense against all that is a healthy community. Yes. And the Linux kernel has this incredibly big, but also incredibly deeply entwined and connected community where there are multi-year multi-decade relationships at the core of all Well, this. it is, I mean, that is true. At the same time, it is worth really pointing out how unusual the kernel is yeah. as an open source project. Uh, a lot of open source projects, even very central ones, are basically run by one or two or three people. And they may have many more people who occasionally contribute but most open source projects are, are really fairly small. And, and uh, the kernel having like <laughs> just the number of main maintainers, depending on how you count, is between 50 and maybe 150. Uh, but we have a thousand people that basically participate in every single release every couple of months. What we do is not necessarily something that can translate to 99% of all the open source projects. But one of the things I, I believe we, and this is the larger we, all of us here in the room, the industry, should be doing is we should be looking at the projects that are under, underutilized, that are not underutilized, that are under supported yeah. by their own community and by all of us who are using this software. I think there is this, this discrepancy of being a user of open source and depending on it deeply, and a, a certain responsibility to then to help solve the problems. And supporting a lot of these smaller projects, not with money, money is, is really hard in this case. What people are looking for is help. So engaging, you know, each of you works for a company, have your company adopt a couple of such projects and just participate, read the code, be part of the, of the reviews of the patches, provide just moral support to the maintainers. It's as simple as that. So I think there's a lot more that we can do. Not everything yes. can be Linux. That would right. be uh, hard. No, I mean, this is, uh, I, I think this has been a wake up call for. I mean, people have been talking about the infrastructure security for the several last years because of not necessarily bad actors, but just bad bugs. Yeah. And, and I think that will actually continue to be a main, the main problem. The, the bad actors may be interesting, but they are at the same time not going to be the common case. We are, we're very good at creating code, but part of that is also we're very good at then sometimes getting it wrong. <laughs> and, and so, it happens even in the kernel community when we try to be very careful because of the area we're working in. 
Yeah, and no one is perfect. Thanks to the Linux Foundation for hosting this event and conversation. If you want more of this video or you found this conversation interesting between Linus and Dirk, check out the link in the description below. Let me know what you think about the recent vulnerabilities in Linux, which subject the entire open source community to more scrutiny. And I'd also love to hear what you think about Linus's thoughts from this conversation. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.